<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, live. live. It's Facebook Live. live. That's why That's we, why do, we this. do this. Okay. okay. On, on this 28th of January, of January 2021, 2021, the year to get it done. done. We're speaking of getting it done, we have real estate extraordinaire, extraordinaire from the St. Louis office, office in Las Vegas, Vegas Nevada, Nevada. Earl, Earl White. White. Not, not to be confused with, with Mr. White. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Thank you, Rick. Is that a reference? Yes. No. No. What's that show? The teacher. Who's the, the drug, drug dealer? dealer. Was his name? Yeah. Oh, Walter White. Walter yeah. White. Yeah. 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 Two great shows. Yeah. Those yeah. Are great. <laughs> all the yeah. Mr. Whites. So yeah. tell them all about yourself, how long you've been doing, doing this, and all that good stuff. stuff. Sure. sure. So I started in real estate a little over nine years ago. I'm um, going into my 10th year. Uh, I was a casino employee that uh, lost my job right in the very pit of the recession, like the worst time possible. And a really great guy, Al Moranto, uh, put me back to work. Shout out to Al, he's gonna run Resort World. But it was just an extra board job. It's all he had at the time. I was making a third of what I'd been come accustomed to living in. And so I got a real estate license to supplement that. Immediately I found out, I was like, well, you know, I gotta get out of the casino business as fast as I can and do real estate. Um, but it took about 14 months of me working both gigs. So I'd work until four in the morning at the casino, uh, get three hours of sleep, drop the kids off, go start prospecting. And if I was lucky, maybe get another power nap before I went back to the casino. And that was, uh, that was how I got my start. Um, we weren't St. Rose, we were Green Valley. Right, right. And I can't say enough about the culture at that time, uh, John Joseph, John had, Joseph yeah. had your position, was running. Yeah. So he was running the branch and he was doing all of the, the brick work yeah. also. And yeah. just, he had built an army of phone badasses. Can I tell say that? Telephone, yeah, <laughs> telephone tough guy. And I was just, um, the minute they saw me showing up every day and beating my head against the phone, they just opened their arms to me and took me into the wing. And I can't say how valuable that was for me. Like the foundation. Yeah. 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 And I actually thought about that. I was getting ready for this interview. And I thought about that in those people. And, well, not all of them are with the company anymore. Like right, Rochelle right. Vinoy, the great Rochelle Vinoy still is. Yeah. yeah. But every single one of those people is still in the industry and very successful. Right, right. Yeah, and, and, and I think John, John took, took that. That, that was, was the worst, worst office. office. And Mark said, you turn that office around, you turn it into the best, best office, office. Yes. which is which is, which great. is great. So, so um, yeah, yeah, and, and, and uh, uh, that's, that's one, one of the reasons, reasons why, why I wanted to have you on today, today because, because of the way that you do it. Because I think the way you do it right now, you know, you're just so called, it's an incredibly great way to do it because it's one of probably the best sources, especially in Nevada where our turnover rate is pretty good. It's so stable. It's not immediate, but it's so stable because market fluctuates, uh, expireds and fizzbos up and down, but right, right. just solds are always there. Yeah. yeah. And as long as you understand that it's not an immediate source, like I have a really good call and I get paid eight or nine months later, right, right. it takes six months to a year to fill that pipeline in this. Um, but Tell them why that is. Give me an example, example of why. why. First, First off, in business, that's not a Sure. But in real right. estate, people get in and they think because they, they watch all those non reality shows. shows. Yeah. Yeah. And they think like Tuesday. You know, right. there'll, there'll be, be uh, closing, closing deals. deals. It takes time. time. Yeah. How many did you sell? You remember your kid used yeah, to say, Dad, how many houses did you sell today? Right. 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 Yeah, that, exactly right. right. I would say, uh, you mean this very day? day? Oh, yeah. none. What did you do? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> um, okay. So, you know, hi, my name's Earl. We've never met. Are you thinking of moving? And, uh, you, you know, the most likely and probable answer for me is, uh, yeah, but not until my husband retires next year or my son graduates in June or there's some like event that will trigger and then I take notes on that. So actually the call card call is my first procedure. You've been the nicest call I've had today. Thank you for speaking with me. I'm going to drop my card in the mail. Then I call him back a week later. Did you get my card? I don't want to bug you. I know you're not moving until June when Johnny graduates, but uh, I want to make sure you got my card. Call, card, call. I'm just trying to, they're never going to remember my name, right, right. but I'm trying to distinguish myself from, you know, one of those realtors that called it, oh, it's that realtor. Oh, 
-hmm. And that's a huge distinction. Yeah. yeah. And then I'll be following up. So if they're graduating in June, then you know probably April. Hey, you want me to come out and take a look at the property? Just give you some ideas. Uh, June rolls around. There's always a delay. Hits the market in August. Right. Uh, escrow, and then you're getting paid in October. Right. Right. So that's and I've made a living at that. I've built a business on that foundation. I remember we had that conversation, I was in my car, and you were, you were thinking about going to a bank, and you said, what if I just do just this with just soul? And I told you, I made a good living on that as well, because yeah. where I come from, you have a lot of experience in this And a lot of agents say, say that, and it's really not true, but it really is. And uh, you just, just got to feel that pipeline. Because two years ago, we were talking, you're like, it's going to be a great year, because I got like 30 some people already in my pipeline. Yeah. And you know you're going to get most of that because of the way you do it. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of advantages and a few disadvantages. So expireds are so attractive to new prospectors. It's like, oh, they were off the market. They can go right back on the market today. Yes. And while my pipeline might take a year to push somebody out, it takes a year to sharpen your skills to be incredibly good at uh, Very expired. Good so, you know, I worked expireds in the beginning and it took me about nine months to really be sharp enough to start getting my pieces of pie. Right. right. Um, I decided later on I didn't really like working expireds. And so I did. I had that, that conversation with you. I was always rushing through my expireds so I could get to the just souls where I, I really enjoyed. And I kind of realized this is a marathon. And if I'm happy doing 20 or 30 of these calls every day, then why am I beating myself up that I, I don't really care for, you know, doing the expires? And it was a really good move for me. You know, maybe not all eggs in one basket is always a good move, but for me, it was. It was the right lead source for me. Right, and, 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 and it's, it's kind of like, like your vision here because, because a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people <laughs> took the yeah, yeah exactly. A lot of people, people took the auto dialing thing, thing yeah. which, which is no longer an issue. issue. Yeah, right. right. I, mean, I mean, there, there are not a lot of expires right, right, right now. now. His bows are, are getting tighter. tighter. So, so the just list is just sold, especially just sold. It's come full circle once again. It's been so consistent, ups, downs, tight, loose. It's been so consistent. And, and again, so I guess going back to the, the you know, high, uh, you might be selling in six months, great, call, card, call, follow up in three months, do you want a free appointment? I'll just come take a look at the property, give you my ideas, tell you how to get it ready, what it's worth, um, staying on top of them. And usually by the time it's time to get the appointment to sign a contract. Usually, I've seen the property once because I do two stops. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've talked to them a dozen times and usually it's just a come out and sign me. It's a how quick can you get in there and take the signature and get out because I'm going on the market and I don't have anything to do. Which, Which is, is one, one of the main benefits, benefits of, of doing, doing justice, justice to just sold. Once you have, once you have, have once you that pipeline, pipeline, you have a pipeline, pipeline with, with almost, almost no competition, competition compared to expired business. Very little competition. Now, when I lose a deal, I usually lose a deal to the guy that's going to do it for, you know, a dollar and a half or whatever. He's gonna he's gonna do it for you know a burrito and a coke. You know, what I mean, he's gonna do it for. We're gonna pay the yeah, two point five, and I'm gonna take a burrito, take a burrito and a coke. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? If that's the case, those aren't those aren't meant for me. You know, if you don't, if I haven't been able to demonstrate the value and you know the difference between me, I am full service, as opposed to someone who's going to, you know, he's gonna. He's operating on volume, he, she, they're operating on volume. They've got a huge staff, they have to pass the file around. If you've got 50 deals in escrow like that guy does, then uh, you couldn't possibly know who these people are or what's right. going on, or, you know, that type of thing. But anyways. Um, Which is why there's a lot of expires and they don't sell for top Yeah, so there's a lot right. of, there's a lot and, and so there's so pros and cons with that. It's not great customer service, service obviously. obviously. Right, you know, I'm going to lose I'm going to lose 25% of all the appointments, but when I lose them, I always lose them to discount brokers. I never lose them to uh, a, a competing, like, full service. Yeah. All the best agents I know charge full price. Right. right. That's, that's a very true statement. And um, 
I don't lose them to them because I've usually built a terrific rapport with them. That's awesome. awesome. All right, so, so, you know, uh, just, just so, so they understand, understand I, want I want them to hear, want want them them to hear your process, because I've seen it, it. But, but I want, I want them to hear, hear your process and, and your numbers and, and let them maybe what your goal is for this year. Sure. Uh, so my goal this year would be 36 transactions, which puts me just a touch over $300,000. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, we came in a little under that, $200,000. Um, uh, what I really need to do is talk to at least 20 people a day. And when I say talk to, I mean they say hello. Uh, ring, ring, ring. I say, hi, my name's Earl. And even if, they, even if they hang up on me, as long as they say hello, and they hear me introduce myself, I count that. I know so did I. So did yeah. I. Some, Some people, people don't. don't. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people will have different versions yeah, yeah. of what a contact is. As long as you set a baseline of which you can measure. Right, right. And that's my baseline. Um, you know, 30 would be great. I have had times when I was very consistent and I would make 30 contacts a day consistently and I don't anymore. Um, I will say that as time, time has gone by, uh, I have three buckets of which I'm collecting rain in now. You know, my uh, spear and past clients, uh, anyone who knows me knows I'm entrenched in the volleyball community. And so right. I get coach. Uh, coach Earl. So I get a fair amount of deals from my volleyball sphere, which I've been cultivating. I don't get them for free. I've been cultivating. Right, right. And then uh, my just sold. So my just sold bucket is not as full as it used to be. Right, right. Um, but that's my goal. Hi, I, I'm trying to get 20 hellos. Right, right. Uh, then I need about 30 minutes to, to follow up on those. Right, right. Um, and when I say follow up on those, I'm not really following up on the people that I spoke to today. I'm, you know, six months, a year. And, you know, I have a database. I have, it's just, it's like an Excel spreadsheet, but it's web-based. It's in Google Drive. Um, it's just name, phone number, address, email, and then the notes. Jim's going to move when his son graduates from high, uh, college uh, or high school, you know, empty nest. So if he's thinking moving in June, callback date would be April. So right. Like that. right. Right. And you have, and you have a, a uh, database full of those people, people that, that, because you're contacting them. Now, now, yeah. You pick like a general area, too, too based, based on, on age, age and, and how many homes. homes and, and so it used to be more. So when I started, nobody had equity. Uh, well, that, let me rephrase that. Very few people had equity. Like in the past, I wouldn't prospect Southern Highlands right, right. because they didn't have any equity. Their houses were built uh, right around the turnover and the boom. So everyone, uh, everyone had been, you know, defaulted or lost their home. Their landline was shut off. Right, and right, they right. didn't have any equity. Now today, it's wide open. I can prospect the whole city because the whole city has equity. Right. But it was very difficult 10 years ago to say, hey, we just sold a house for $200,000. I paid four ten, <laughs> you know, right. which, is, which is a real thing. Um, and so now I am, I, I, do, I do have certain areas that I prospect, but I'm not as selective as I once was because equity is no longer an issue. Gotcha. Awesome. 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 And then and if, they're, if, if they're interested, interested you usually take, take whatever time, time they give you. Give you Divide by two. two right? That's a very general rule. Yeah. You know, that's a very good rule. If somebody says, when my son graduates on June 1st, that's when I'm going to be looking to move. You had better not be calling them on June 1st or 2nd. Yeah, because they've already gone. <laughs> right. Somebody else, you know, uh, may or may not have locked them up. You know, my job is to be a salesman. It's not their job to call me. It's right. my job to call them. And in April, I'm asking them, would you like, would you like to set up a time for a free consultation? I'll just walk the, pro I know you're not moving for months. I'll just give you the ideas of how to get it ready. Right, right. Um, sometimes they don't want that. That's fine. Great. But I need to be top of mind, present, you know, top of mind. Um, and you have that time, time to do it. it. Yeah, absolutely. And, you, you know, good prospects. Good prospects are engaging you. And what I mean by that is the guy that's always, ah, I'm not ready, I didn't even call you, don't call you, don't call me, you know, not taking the calls. Those are the people that are inevitably less likely to hire you. And the ones that are, oh, it's good to, yeah, I was thinking about you, girl. Uh, you know what, give me, give me two more weeks. You know, call me in two weeks. He's asking me right. to call him. Those are the best prospects. And you start to learn the difference. Right. In the beginning, give yourself permission to talk to lots of bad prospects. 
but eventually you'll learn what a good prospect sounds and feels like. And uh, I always say progress, I'll chase progress to the end of the earth. So if a guy says, well, I got to paint the fence and get new carpet, and I call him back and he goes, wow, I, I painted the fence, but I haven't done the carpet. That's progress, right. and I'll keep chasing that guy. But the guy that's, I think I'm going to move in six months, and I call him three months later. It's, I think I'm going to move in six months, but there's never any progress. It's always six months or next uh -huh. year. That's the guy that I'm ready to cut and gotcha. uh, you know, move on from. Good. 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 And, and tell them how you speed, speed up, up the... Uh, it's interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I used to speak up money people to <laughs> uh, Okay, so 10 years ago, all of the smart people uh, invested in auto dialers. Dial, you know, they would dial multiple numbers at once, they got more contacts. And in the very beginning, it was in the for, for that first year and a half, it was just a money issue. I didn't want to pay the 150 a month or whatever. So I'd dial, and when this one started ringing, then I'd dial this phone. And then it was time to hang up and dial on this one, and then you know dial on this one, and then I got used to it, and it became a little game for me. How how quickly could I keep both of them juggling? And everybody made fun of me because, and rightfully so, the smart play was to get an auto dialer for that five, six, seven year bridge. But I just I just yeah, liked, sure. I just got used to doing it that way, and it preoccupied my time. It's a boring event to dial numbers and tell someone. Calls. But I'd make a little game of it, and so I just get used to it, and everybody made fun of me, and then, <laughs> and then the crash came down, and everybody that everyone who's on an auto dialer, uh, you know, the, the the restrictions tightened up, right. and they said, look, it's now we're going to get fines because it has a vi there's a violation, you know, by using this multi dialer, and uh, and everyone uh, all of a sudden I looked like a genius. It only took. Eight years of bad decisions for me to start looking for. Well, I was talking about, about you uh, visionary. Visionary, yeah. <laughs> you, knew you knew it was, it was coming. coming. Yeah, that's it. I knew it was coming. No, I didn't. I just, I just, you know, some things I just do the way I like. I call just sold because I like it, and I hand dial because I like it, and I'm okay with doing two stops because I, you know, I'm okay with that. It's been very profitable. Uh, because I don't work expired, so I'm not in the office at eight. I wake up when I'm rested and get some exercise. In the office by the crack of nine thirty, and uh, you know, yeah, that's why I was joking because it used to be the crack, crack of eight seven thirty eight, and now, it's, <laughs> and now it gets. Hey, I was being kind to myself when I said nine thirty. There's a lot of days that uh, I may not start until ten. So, but as, as long, long as you get, get your twenty, 20 contacts. contacts in. Well, I have I have the luxury of an assistant who does all, you know, preps all the numbers for me and whenever, you know, uh, puts them into the database, and helps me with all of the, all of the stuff that a lot of agents will use an excuse, as an excuse to not be on the phones. I have the luxury of paying someone to do that. So I have less things to do. What do I really need to do? I need to make calls. I need to make follow-up calls. I need to prep for appointments. I need to go on appointments. Um, that's that's my job, and it's amazing if you cut out all the BS, the uh, check my, right. you know whatever, you know you can cut those three hours out a day, and right. you know I really don't need to be in the office more than about four hours, and then out in the field for two to four hours. That's all I need to run a very successful business at my pace. Awesome. That way you, you do, do it too, that's, that's great. great. So, so, so which brings me to my favorite question. question. So, so you've been doing this a while now, very successful, 36, you know, grocery and that's, that's, that's a, a really good real estate agent, in case you know that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And so what would be the top three things you would tell them, whether they're brand new or trying to go to the next level, what would be the three best pieces of advice that you can give them? Okay, so number one, and I've said this many times, um, if, especially if you're new, people go, you know, I just got my license, I'm a realtor, or I'm a real estate agent, I sell houses. Nope. Your job is to prospect for new deals. That's the ugly truth about this business is that you are a shark that cannot stop swimming. You have to continually be looking for another deal. So you can spend half of your time servicing your clients, but you have to spend the other half of the time looking for new deals. You need to wrap your arms and embrace the idea that your job is to say hello to 20 to 30 new people every day. 
Um, and you could use the 30-30 rule. If you're brand new and you want to be successful, 30 minutes of practice every day and 30 hellos every day. And that, no one can stop you from being successful if you'll do those two things. It's so true. If you talk to that many people every day, this is my theory when I first started at 19. I could be terrible. And if I talk to 30 people a day, I'm going to do a few deals. And it was true, because I was terrible at first. You, you don't want to move, do you? <laughs> <laughs> you should move, you know. And I've, and I've come to understand that my job is not to convince people to move. My job is to find people that have already decided they want to move and convince them why they should hire me. You can't make somebody move. You shouldn't try to make somebody move. You can't convince them. Now is a good time to market something. They either want to move or they don't want to move. Right. And then they need an right. agent. And then my job is to step in. So that's one, 30 that's minutes of practice and 30 minutes or uh, 30 hellos. Um, what would be the next one? 30 30s are really, really good. One. You know, I, I wrote, I knew you were going to ask me that, so I wrote that down. It was okay. a good one. Check, Check the notes. Uh, it's a business, not a job. Expect large delays in the beginning. So in the beginning, look, you don't get a paycheck on Friday for right. being terrible. And being, you're going to be terrible, and you're not going to do a lot of deals, and there's going to be a real delay. But I will, I'll give this example. Uh, last year, 2020, I closed a lady. Uh, by closed lady, I helped her sell her house when she right. wanted to. That she had my original card from Prudential. I had originally called her you know, seven years earlier or something, and she was going to move, and then it fell through. And then she got your handwritten note with the card, and then she kept exactly. The card. Yeah, she really did. And I will say that um, the older my clientele is, the more likely they are to respect the handwritten card and the business card right. and such. Uh, younger generation, they keep them, some you know, if it doesn't go into their contacts, then they don't keep it. Yeah. Um, so expect a large delay. The majority of of people that either you're not making the thirty contacts, but they go, I did it for a month. It didn't right. work. <laughs> You know, I don't get a paycheck. I'm really no, good no, at that this. That was a good invitation, too. Right. I, I, I'm really good at this, and it takes me a year to get a paycheck from yeah. somebody to talk to on the phone. You um, know, when, when, when people, people say that, they're coaching. I have to ask. You know what I'm saying? Oh, 30 days. You don't qualify to be frustrated yet. You just started. Yes. Usually the enthusiasm <laughs> keeps you going you know, closer to that 60, 90 day mark. And then you're like, why isn't this happening? It's not happening fast enough. That's right. the number one complaint in real estate. Um, and look, it's not going to. You're building a business. This isn't a job. No one's going to pay you on Friday. It's a business. Yeah. And there's a delay. That's, That's a, a great, great point. point. Uh, and then last, run a business like a business. Uh, the two things I would say there's you have to have a follow-up system. You know, oh, I put them in my phone. That's not a follow-up system. You have to have, um, you know, contact information, yes, but also... Why and when are they moving? So that you can say, hey, Rick, uh, we talked and you said you're moving after June when your son graduates. And that will trigger them to say, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, you know, I, I've talked to this person, obviously. Right. Run a business like a business. Um, and those are high income producing conversations when you're talking to somebody who has motivation now or in their future. Absolutely. All the money is in follow up. Yeah. If you don't do follow-up, if you don't become excellent at follow-up, then you're just wasting your time doing the initial hellos. Right. I don't get deals signed on hellos. So, you know, I'm looking, is this person worth calling back? Right. Then, you know, can I get an appointment? And then the appointment is when you get a signature. Um, again, that's the ugly truth of sales. That's the process. That's the process, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Run a business like a business. And then it took me a while to learn this one too. Um, I was so ingrained in getting a deal in the beginning. I didn't realize that you treat these people like gold because they are your referral network. Absolutely. You know, I didn't, you know, well, he just bought a house. When's he going to buy another house? Well, I'm, you know, in five to six years, the average person moves and I'm, you know, I'm in a, I've been in business long enough that some of these families I'm helping them move two or three times. Right. So. So the key is uh, basically on, on uh, is having a good CRM, your notes updated, your next follow up dates scheduled. Yeah. Okay. So you're just having these conversations. Remember, I used to call it advanced prospecting. Right? Yeah. They weren't leads yet, and yeah. they weren't hellos, 
But that middle time there is where the magic happens. They're leads, Rick. I, I, I called my 37 leads today. <laughs> and they're not exactly leads right. yet, but they're, but they're follow-up calls. And uh, that's where all the money is. is. So a follow-up system must, must, must have a callback date or an action date. I'm going to drive by and see them. I'm going to call them. I'm going to mail to them. Whatever you're going to do, it has to have that date. Otherwise, you just have a blow of glorified Rolodex, right. you know, it has to say when you're going to do the next thing, engage that person. Call, card, call, divide, divide by two, whatever they say, sometimes less. Yes. And, and that's how you set it up so you never forget them. Yeah. I can't possibly remember all the people that I talked to. Now, I remember all of my, my past clients fear, people that I, I engage right. with regularly. Right. I know all of them really well, right? But um, someone I haven't done a deal with yet, but I want to do a deal with, I couldn't possibly remember. So I do them the justice of writing, what is their name, their contact information? What, why am I trying to help this person? They want to move to a single story. They want to move when you know, their kids graduate. They right. want to move to be closer to mom. Knowing why and then when, those, those notes have to go in. And then when am I going to move? Right. And when I, when I listen to your prospect, you sound extremely interested in their story, which is helpful because stress moving is a stressful thing. And they yeah. need to know that you are interested in their story. You do all the repeating and improving. It sounds like you're talking to like a family member or a yeah. good friend. I think that's critical. You know, in the 10 years, um, in the first two years, you think of how stressful moving is. To you, the agent. Right. Gosh, this is stressful. I'm trying to get this deal to right. the end. And then soon... It's no longer really stressful for you. You understand the procedure and the process. And then soon you start to realize how stressful it is for them. And then soon you realize, oh my God, this is the most stressful part of their life. Right, right now, yeah. And then you realize that it's like rolling the toothpaste. The pressure is building. And at it, it, that, it, that final, you know, that week of closing, they've had to take everything they own and put it in a box and get ready to move it somewhere. On top of the largest financial transaction they've ever made, sometimes two at the same time. Right. They're terrified. They've got one foot out the door and one foot in the door, but they can't close this one until they close that one. And the pressure is mounting, and sometimes sometimes there's a snap, and it's not your fault. Right. You can't and take it personally. You can't take it personally. You, we get paid really well to take as much of that pressure off of them as you possibly can. Right. And, you know, your part-time agents and your discount, your high-volume agents, they don't understand that and they can't do that. Right. Um, but that that becomes more apparent to me every day. That's huge. Well, I, I was going to close, but I have to say, I know that a lot of you are thinking this. So I'm just going to answer it for you. You're wondering, why does their haircuts look so the same? They're slightly different. So Earl is, got the, he's, got, he's like the clipper all the way down to the base. And mine's actually a razor blade. So his is tight, mine is super tight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the phone was crazy. Uh, Earl, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Love to see you doing it. Keep it rocking. Everybody else will be out next week. Thanks for your time. Thank you.